Pokemon Black and White along with their sequels are some of the best Pokemon games in the entire franchise, and we're reaching that time in a Pokemon game's life cycle where they're going to be getting a remake soon, but do they really need remakes? Pokemon Black and White are pretty solid games, and I feel like a remake would be redundant. And after seeing what they did to Diamond and Pearl, I don't think I want a remake. But there is one thing I do want, Pokemon Legends Kirim. While I would love to see Pokemon Black and White 3, I think that Legends Kirim would just be the better experience overall. Everyone loves Legends Arceus, and it's really hard not to. It's like everything we love about Pokemon and approved upon all of it. While they did get rid of some features that are essential to the core of Pokemon like abilities and held items, it's still managed to be a lot of fun. I think the strong and agile move mechanic was really cool and made battles a little more strategic. You could give a weak attack and follow it up with a strong attack the next turn, or maybe you could just go all out and brute force it, hoping you knock it out right then and there. There's just so much to mess around with. The additions of alpha Pokemon made things even better. It's just so awesome seeing giant versions of your favorite Pokemon roam around, and it's not just that. Getting to see all of your Pokemon out of their Pokeballs at once was just such a joy to experience firsthand. Basically, everything in Legends Arceus was amazing, but it was by no means perfect. Again, Pokemon were unable to hold items, which really sets back some strategy from combat. I can live without it, but it would still be nice to have. Something also absent in Legends Arceus was abilities. It was pretty strange playing without them. There's some Pokemon that rely on their abilities to be good, and others whose abilities hold them back. Imagine how horrifying Slacking would have been if it was in Legends Arceus, or how terrible Shedinja would have been without Wonder Guard. I just think that it would add to the gameplay just a little more and just make it more of a complete experience. A lot of people might disagree with me here, but I felt like like there was a lack of customization. I thought the clothing options and hairstyles were really limited, but that was probably just because of the time period. It'd be pretty strange seeing people walk around with a t-shirt and smartphone. Oh wait, something that I feel would have been nice to have was breeding. It just makes things a lot more convenient, especially for shiny hunters. Again though, I see why they didn't implement it since if we're able to breed Pokemon, that means we've domesticated them, and that isn't exactly the case in Legends Arceus. I don't think any of these missing features really set the game back though. I mean, don't get me wrong, they would have been nice to have, but the game is still really fun without them. It was done out of creativity, something brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl lacks. Now let's take a look at what Ilka decided to do. They gave us a one-to-one -one recreation of Diamond and Pearl but somehow made it worse? The whole point of a remake is to improve upon the game, not make it a carbon copy. At that point, why not just play the original games? I'm assuming Ilka didn't have a lot of creative control over what they wanted to do because it does seem like they really cared about making everything exact, but I just think the Pokemon company wasn't really letting them take the idea anywhere out of fear of being too much for them to handle. They just aren't great remakes in any way, which is a shame because I honestly thought they were looking pretty good leading up to its release, and these were some of the most anticipated remakes of all time, so it's clear which one of these games is the fan favorite, so I really hope Game Freak realizes this and decides to make Legends Kirim. We've been getting hints to black and white related stuff, so something is coming, we just don't know what. The first obvious hint is Ingo being in Legends Arceus. He also got transported to the world much like you and is suffering from amnesia. On top of that, the ancient hero looks a lot like Alder, like not even in an ancestor type way, it just straight up looks like Alder. So either he has really strong genes, or he was also sent back to the past somehow. We also got a new addition to the nature trio, or I guess nature quartet, we got an Amorous, which I didn't even know was a thing for the longest time. They're pointing so hard towards black and white related things, and I'm all for it. As for what I would want to see in the game, they 100% have to incorporate the original dragon in some way. What the original dragon was, was Reshiram, Zekrom, and Kiram all fused into one Pokemon. And seeing as how this game will release on its own with no secondary title, it just makes the most sense to do. Seeing N's ancestor along with Getsis are no-brainers, and if we do get to see N's ancestor, maybe that can finally shed some light onto who N really is. For years, people have been wondering just what exactly is up with him. Some people even suspect him of being a Zoroark, or maybe just part Pokemon. I'm not sure how long ago in this past I would want this game to be though. I know I mentioned the original Dragon earlier, which would mean it has to take place in the past, but I feel like if it took place around the same time in Legends Arceus, it would feel too similar to it. Legends Arceus was during the Meiji period in Japan, and while it was cool to see how people were first interacting with Pokemon in the creation of the first Pokedex, I don't want to go through that again. Imagine an old-timey western-themed game, or maybe one during the Industrial Revolution. I think that'd be really interesting to see, and we won't have to see small villages anymore. We get to see a city first being built. Imagine what Castelia City would look like. I think they could still make the original dragon work out somehow, though. I mean, all they really gotta do is fuse them all together. That can't be too hard, right? Maybe the game could have dream areas, sort of like how Legends Arceus had space-time distortions. Dreams were a big part of Generation 5, so it'd be really interesting to see how it's incorporated. An idea I saw getting thrown around was instead of a steam 
steampunk industrial revolution setting? What if we got a medieval one instead? Unova has a lot of references to an ancient kingdom and royalty. There's already been lore talking about an ancient castle from 2,500 years ago, the Relic Castle, which was run by the two twin heroes and their respective dragon. The castle was the center of the Unovan kingdom. If you aren't familiar with the twin heroes, they were basically two brothers who couldn't decide whether to pursue truth or ideals. The original dragon thus split into two parts, becoming Reshiram and Zekrom, leaving Kiram as an empty husk. Reshiram followed the brother pursuing truth, whereas Zekrom followed ideals. The lore is leaning more towards medieval Pokemon, especially with all the emphasis on dragons throughout the entire region. I mean, I still think that an old-timey industrial revolution Pokemon game would be awesome, but the medieval one just makes more sense. Also, I know that End's castle exists, but this thing only rose from the ground after beating the Elite Four, and according to a Team Plasma grunt, it had only been under construction for a few years, so I don't think we're going to be seeing End's castle anytime soon. In Legends Arceus, we got to see a ton of our beloved characters' ancestors, like Arezu, Bolo, and Rai. And while some people are tired of seeing ancestors already, I think they're cool. It wouldn't hurt to have some new characters too, though. With Ingo being in Legends Arceus, I think it would be cool to see his brother Emmett wind up in Legends Kiram. They ran the battle subway together in black and white, so it would be really cool seeing Emmett take control of one of those stereotypical steam power trains you'd see during the Industrial Revolution. Skyla's ancestor being like the Wright brothers building the first plane is such a cool concept. I feel like throughout the game, it'd be really funny if she would just end up crashing wherever you are and be like, Oh hey, what are you doing here? I think the ancestor everyone wants to see is N. There's so much mystery behind him, and by taking a look at his ancestor, we can finally figure out what N is. There's a lot of people who think N is a Zoroark, and I don't blame them. Some think that maybe he's a Pokemon-human hybrid, which would explain why he can communicate with Pokemon. What I think is going to be revealed is that N is royalty. I mean, Team Plasma refers to N as the king of Team Plasma, as well as Lord. And Getsus found N when he was a kid, and decided to make him the king of Team Plasma. Do you really think Getsus would give that title to some random? random kid in the woods. He knows something we don't. N was also able to capture Reshiram or Zekrom, depending on your version, two Pokemon who were captured by the twin heroes. There's so little we know about N, so it would be really cool to finally shed some light on his background. Getsus' ancestor has to play a huge role in the plot. The guy looks insane. Maybe he was a sorcerer back then if we're going based off of medieval times. Polaris' ancestor has 100% got to be the one making all the technological progress during the Industrial Revolution. He's a genius, and I'm sure that holds true with his entire bloodline. Team Plasma Plasma has to have some sort of relevance in this game, so what would they be? Like the Galaxy team, I don't think Team Plasma will be a threat in this game. An idea I had was maybe they're the Plasma Paladins, keeping peace throughout the Unovan Kingdom. There's a lot of evidence backing up why they'd become knights though. Team Plasma's uniforms already looks like a knight's armor. Their logo straight up looks like a shield. Getsus' cloak looks like a crenellation, which is the little pattern of bricks you'd see on top of castle walls. And speaking of castles, Team Plasma's base was N's castle. And like I mentioned earlier, they refer to N as their king. This only adds to the idea that N's bloodline's royalty and was ruling over Unova, commanding the Plasma Paladins, of course. However, if they went with the Industrial Revolution instead, though, Plasma is a combination of fire and lightning, so it can still work. The idea I had was Plasma Power Plants. You're basically trying to provide power to the world with Plasma, or something like that. I didn't think that far into it. The point is, Team Plasma is going to get involved. An old legend in Lakunosa Town says that a large meteor fell from the sky, and that meteor apparently contained Kiram. At night, the monster would bring cold wind and take people and Pokemon away to eat them. The town's residents then surrounded Lakunosa town with a wall to keep Kiram out, and a rule was set on the town that forbade anyone from leaving the town at night, encouraging them to stay in their homes. While the residents may not believe in the tale anymore, they still remain in their houses at night, and the wall's still standing. Just hearing this legend makes the setting sound so grim and creepy. And while I know Pokemon would never make a game setting that spooky, it's still important to note that they were absolutely horrified. In modern day Unova, Kiram resides in the giant chasm, which is the impact Impact crater of the meteor that supposedly brought Kiram to Unova. And I keep saying supposedly and apparently because an NPC states that this myth could possibly be false. In Black and White 2, it's confirmed that Kiram is what was left when the original dragon split into Reshiram and Zekrom. Though this could just mean that Kiram wasn't what came from the meteor, the original dragon did. I think it would be sick if we got to experience the original dragon crashing into Unova and having a darker Pokemon game, but I don't think they'd go in that direction. Black and White's original theme was truth and ideals, so how exactly can we incorporate that into the plot? If we were to go with the medieval era, we could easily fit the story of the twin heroes in there. Maybe Getsus' ancestor was pulling some strings in there. Sort of like how he was basically brainwashing N. I don't really know who a surprise villain could be. I feel like all of our candidates are too obvious. Maybe the king wants Pokemon to live in harmony and another wants to weaponize them. I don't know. I'm just throwing darts blindly and hoping I hit something. Oh my god, I hit a baby. Something we have to see is the Swords of Justice. I mean, they're literally a reference to the Three Musketeers, so they've gotta have some sort of plot relevance. For the steampunk era, 
sense. Maybe one person can be pushing forward with technology, but the others see wrong in it. I don't know. I don't got a lot of ideas to go off of since there's no source material, but I'm sure you guys could come up with something better. I think the big question that will determine a lot of this game's plot is whether it will be an isekai or not. I'm hoping that it's not an isekai because that just overcomplicates things a lot. And I also don't want to go through the whole, you're an outsider. We hate you, even though you're hard carrying our entire village stuff again. That genuinely pissed me off. The village would be dead without me and you know it. The starter trio is pretty important. I'm assuming we won't be seeing any of the ones from generation five since Legends Arceus didn't have any of the generation four trio. So maybe we could be seeing Bulbasaur, Torshig, and Froki, or maybe even Sobble, Fennekin, and Turtwig. Those are just some off the wall guesses and there's no real way to figure out what new typing they will take on, but I think a ghost Blaziken would be cool. Actually, never mind. We have a lot of fire ghost types now. I couldn't come up with all the ideas on my own though. So I decided to ask some of you what your ideas were. It would be really cool to see the relic castle in the ocean ruins near Undella Town, not buried by sand slash underwater. I completely forgot about these ruins. They have some pretty cryptic messages about the King of Unaba, so maybe we can learn a little more about them by reading some. King is brave. King never loses hope. King has a dream. King accepts all. Good or evil isn't all. Life is gratitude. War creates tears. King talks to all beings. This sounds like a cult. That last part about kings talking to all beings though, I'm just saying. And the brothers that fought over truth and ideals. Maybe they could do something similar to Legends Arceus and have feuding clans for both sides. I think that might be the direction they're going to take this, but I really hope it doesn't feel the same as Legends Arceus. It was such a pain having to be the messenger boy for both clans. I was a big fan of Pokestar Studios personally, so I would absolutely love if there was some ancient theater side quest where you could perform small little scenes with rental Pokemon. I think it'd slap personally. And imagine the secret scene you'd be able to play after getting all the reviews. Bad, good, surprise. And as the scene begins, Mecha Tyranitar lands on the stage across from you, referencing not only Godzilla, but the same Mecha Tyranitar from Black and White too. God, I'd love it and play it to hell and back. I think that'd be so cool, especially since medieval theaters were a thing. I'm not exactly sure what the theater would play out though, since the one you'd expect them to do is the one we'll be playing through. Maybe the twin heroes were way further back, and if that's the case, then they could probably still be able to do this. Improvements from PLA would be fast travel between areas, multiple towns. PLA had camp settlements, but they were very small scale. Few of any side quest, etc. Dungeons. I didn't really have much of an issue with Legends Arceus's fast travel system. Everything was cut into segments anyway, but I think more settlements would be huge. I hated how Legends Arceus only had one major town in the entire region. It felt so empty and lifeless out of town. I want to see the beginnings of other settlements too. We already know that Legends Arceus was a success, so if this game also does extremely well, I think the Pokemon company would want to pour more of their efforts into Legends games. A lot of people seem to think that this is a spin-off, but it's not. It's considered main series. So not only will this benefit Legends, but also future generations to come. However, that all comes down to if we even get to have these games in the first place. We might not get anything at all, and if that turns out to be true, that's okay. This video was just made for fun and speculation. I think the likelihood of us getting Legends Kirim is pretty high. It's the most logical step Game Freak can take with Legends Arceus. What I would prefer most is if Game Freak took a little break from making games to work on a quality game instead of rushing out to meet deadlines. But that's not in their control. It's up to the Pokemon company. And we all know how much they love money. I'm not buying a $400 plush. And then I walked out with four. Just kidding, I'm poor. By the time I was finishing up this script, one of the most credible leakers in the Pokemon community decided to hint at a Unova game. And I really hope this video gets out before it gets released, because if it doesn't, then this whole video would be pointless. Subscribe, like the video, comment, join the discord. Is my house on fire? Bye!